Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and I am out here at Duelist Inn. And um, it's Halloween. And Halloween has a particular significance here at Duelist Inn, which I wasn't aware of when I bought the place. Now, you know, when, when I bought this, just like everybody, I thought I was asking all the right questions. Right? I asked about fires and floods, natural disasters that might have occurred here. But uh, it never occurred to me that I should be asking about hexes, hauntings, and supernatural eruptions. And that's a lesson learned because the buyers certainly are not going to discuss that, or the sellers, I should say, are certainly not going to volunteer that information on their own. And it wasn't too long after I bought Duelist Den, because I bought it in October, that I learned that uh, Duelist Den is in the south end of a place called Blymeyer's Hollow in southern York County, Pennsylvania. And that this is actually the nexus of the most famous witchcraft murder of the early 20th century. And because of the supernatural connection, I discovered that the barrier between this world and the supernatural world is stretched very thin here at Duelist Den. And I also learned that on Halloween, that barrier can be breached by creatures from the supernatural world and that it was my job now to be the keeper of the portal between the worlds and to defend our world against incursions from the supernatural world. As you can imagine, this is not something that I believed, but that first Halloween made me a believer. So, here I am, I'm standing vigil on Halloween, as I always do, to keep you safe. And uh, while I'm here, let me tell you the story of how all this started. And that is the infamous hex murder of 1928 in York County. So, let me go and do my rounds, and I'll tell you that story as I do. Well, it started. I've got some imps from hell behind me. I'm going to use my 1887 shotgun loaded with silver buckshot to take them out. So let's try and purify this world. Well, as the smoking barrel of my gun shows, we've sent those imps back with a taste of brimstone. There's one more that's still He's hurt, but he's not down. Let me see if I can finish him off. Got him. Well, Duelist End is here in southern York County. And York County was settled in two separate streams, if you will. Northern York County, which was settled first. Um, in the late 1830s, uh, it first began into the early 1840s. It was settled by English Quakers. And the part of York County where I live, Newbury Township, was actually the first area that was settled. There were two valleys there, uh, very close to my house, in fact, that were settled by the English Quakers. And the Susquehanna Indians were there, and eventually, you know, the Quakers spread throughout northern York County, and other English settlers came in. And uh, it became a typical English colony. But southern York County, was settled largely by Pennsylvania Dutch coming out of Lancaster County. And in fact, Southern York County was predominantly German uh, right up into the 20th century. And according to the census reports, the predominant spoken language in Southern York County, including York City, 
was German right up until the Civil War. Uh, English was kind of a second language in Southern York County. Uh, newspapers were printed in German, the, the whole bit. So the dividing line is just a little bit south of me, maybe five miles, ten miles, well, five miles south of my house. It's Conewago Creek, which bisects the county running east and west. And north of Conewago Creek is the English cultural area, and south of Conewago Creek is the Dutch cultural area, German cultural area. And you can still see a lot of that today, even though, of course, in the you know 20th century, the 21st century, there's been much more mixing and moving of populations was very fluid. But because Southern York County was settled by Pennsylvania Dutch, it maintained Pennsylvania Dutch folk ways and beliefs. And the Pennsylvania Dutch have a strong belief in magic. And you can see vestiges of this if you drive through Dutch country and look at the barns. You'll, you'll see those beautiful hex symbols painted on the barns to protect them. And that's just part of it. They were very superstitious people and that carried over uh, almost to the present day. And, you know, they brought over German European superstitions, but here in America, they took root and, of course, they evolved. And they evolved into a very unique uh, set of folkways around practical magic that the Pennsylvania Dutch call powwow. And uh, a lot of men are practitioners of that. They're called powwow men, and they're also called witches. And this is something that Pennsylvania Dutch had a very strong belief in. And, you know, not just in the far distant past. Because when I moved here in the 1990s, and or actually 1980s, <laughs> I should say, uh, 1985, I moved to this part of the state. I, I left New England in 1978. In 1985, I moved to this part of the state. Now, of course, you know, I was in some shooting matches, some shooting clubs. And, you know, there were a lot of Dutch folks who were shooting muzzleloaders. And I had plenty of them tell me stories of uh, powwow men hexing their shooting opponents' um, targets. And what they would do is they would make a bundle of charms with some incantations, and, and dog poop was a very popular part of that, by the way, as I learned. And they would mix that up in a bag, and they would hide that bag behind their opponent's target stand. And that powwow would cause their bullets to deflect a little bit away from the bullseye, so that the powwow men would be able to beat them on score. And, and that was in the 1970s. So you can bet if it was going on in the 1970s, it's still going on today. But if we go back to the turn of the 20th century, that belief in powwow magic was very strong. And that's what led to the Great Hex Murder of 1928. And that's what led to the, basically the haunting of Blymire Hollow. Because the two families involved in the Hex Murder were John Blymire, the Blymire family, and of course, Duelist Den occupies the south end of Blymire Hollow and Nelson Rymeyer. I know it's difficult because those names sound so much the same, right? But we've got Nelson Rymeyer. And if you were to go up the western ridge of my hollow and go across the flat table land at the top, the farmland, and descend into the next hollow, that next hollow is Rymeyer's hollow. And that's where the Rymeyer family was. So this area, had the two main participants in the Hex murder. Because John Blymeyer, who was a farmer and whose family owned all of this land, John had been having a real string of bad luck. For several years, he'd had chronic illnesses. He just couldn't shake, uh, couldn't seem to get better. He was having all kinds of bad luck. He would have animals that would get sick and die. He would have crops that failed. Uh, he was getting desperate. So, he decided to find out what was going on. 
Well, we're having our second supernatural eruption. This time we've got a bevy of ghost witches that have come over from the supernatural world, and I'm going to have to try to send them back. Well, I think we sent them back to Hades where they belong. So, not knowing where else to turn, John Blymeyer visited Nellie Knoll. Now, Nellie Knoll was known as the River Witch of Marietta in York County. So Nellie was a famous female powwow practitioner over on the Susquehanna River. So she did her incantations and her study of John Blymeyer, and she decided that he was being hexed. That this was not natural bad luck. He had a curse on him. And she told him that the person who placed that curse was a powwow man named Nelson Rymeyer. John's, ho John's neighbor in the next hollow. And that Nelson Rymeyer was the cause of all John Blymeyer's ills. And that he was going to have to do something about that. Well, the apparitions are getting a little more serious now. That's the end of that one. <laughs> Blymeyer was very concerned about this. He had suspected that he was being hexed, but here it was confirmed by Nellie, the River Witch of the Marietta. So I asked Nellie what could he do about this, and she said that he was going to have to go to Nelson Rymeyer and get the book. And the book is a very famous powwow book. It was written in the early 1800s by John George Homan. And it's called The Long Lost Friend. And that innocuous name is actually the name of a book filled with spells and incantations. All the knowledge of powwow magic is in that book. And every powwow practitioner worth their salt has a copy of it. Now Nellie told John Blymeyer that he needed to get Nelson Rymeyer's copy of The Long Lost Friend. And not only did he have to get that copy, but in order to stop the hex, he had to get that copy and burn it. And he had to get a lock of the witch's hair and bury that. And that was the only way that he was going to break the hex. Well, this was not news that John Blymeyer was pleased to hear. Because now, in order to get his life back, he was going to have to accost a powerful powwow, powwow man on his home ground and get him to reveal the secret location of his most prized possession. And then he was going to have to get a lock of his hair and conduct the ritual to break the hex. But he saw no way out of it. 
he had to turn his life around and Nelly was telling him this was the only way he was going to do it. So he recruited two strong teenage boys, told them what the problem was, and they needed their help. And together, they broke into John Reimeyer's house one evening. They overpowered Reimeyer. They tied him to a chair. And they demanded that he tell them where his copy of The Long Lost Friend was hidden. But Reimeyer would not talk. So they beat him. First lightly, but he still wouldn't talk. Then they beat him savagely. They beat him nearly to death. And still he wouldn't reveal the location of his book, The Long Lost Friend. Blymeyer was beside himself now. He knew that Reimeyer would go to his grave without giving up the location of his book of spells. He decided the only way to break the spell now was to burn Nelson Reimeyer to death and hope that fire cleansed the hex and gave him his life back. Well, I've managed to draw out the head goblin. If I can blast him back to perdition, this earthly plane will be safe for one more year. Well, you can all sleep more peacefully in your beds tonight. Blymeyer and his two assistants doused Nelson Reimeyer's body with kerosene and they lit him on fire. And still, he would not give up the location of the book when they said they would put him out and save his life if he would tell, he wouldn't. And he burned to death in his house. But strangely, his body was not consumed by the flames, despite being doused in kerosene. Though he was dead, he had not burned up. And Blymeyer knew that all his actions had been in vain, that he could not break the hex unless he had the book. And the book is something he never found. So Blymeyer went to trial. A famous, sensational trial. Here in York County and, and across the country, it was national news. The hex murder of York County. And of course, Blymeyer was found guilty and condemned. Never found the book. And of course, that led to speculation that maybe Nelson Reimeyer was falsely accused by Nellie Knoll. Maybe she had some reason for wanting to get rid of him and he wasn't really a witch. Ironically, that turned out not to be true. And the reason we know that's not true is because over the course of time, Nelson Reimeyer's book, The Long Lost Friend, was found. And he was a powwow man. He was a witch. Now, Nellie may have wanted to get rid of a rival, and that's why she sent John Blymeyer on his mission of destruction. We'll never know. Uh, and we'll never know if Nelson Reimeyer really had hexed John Blymeyer or not. He may have, or that may have been something that Nellie made up. The only one who knows is Nelson Reimeyer. And he took that knowledge with him to the grave. And that's why every year at Halloween, he opens this portal. And I have to stand vigil to make sure that what he sends across can't get into our world 
and cause havoc. So now you know the whole story of the great hex murder of York County. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next Thursday.